Hi everyone and welcome to the Porsche 911 GT3 World Premiere. My name is Sarah Elzer and I'm super excited to host that live stream for you and I'm very happy that you're joining us here digitally. I know you're all waiting for that moment, the moment of revelation. But before we show you the new member of the GT family, we'll present you the most important facts about it. And since we've got some international journalists watching our live stream, we'll answer answer some of their questions in a short Q&A session. I can promise though, your patience will be worth it. It's not a secret that Porsche sport cars are strongly related to numbers and I want to highlight just one of them today, specifically the number seven. And this is also a very magical number in our everyday life. I mean, think about it, seven days a week, seven continents, seven colors of the rainbow, James Bond, the seven world wonders, and I'm pretty sure we can add one more to that list today. And before the guy in the back is getting more nervous about my, yeah, let's say, very pathetic speech right now, I leave it at that and I instead extend a very warm welcome to Frank Walleser, Vice President, Model Lines 911 and 718. Hi, Sarah. Hi. I couldn't see your face, but I hope I didn't put too much pressure on you. Oh, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> it's, it's okay. This is the, this is the motorsport attitude. And <laughs> since we're talking about motorsports, Frank, we all know you in your previous function as motorsport boss of Porsche. So the expectations for the street cars are extremely high now, or let's say even higher. They were, of course, pretty high anyway. So do you think you can fulfill them with the new Porsche GT3? You're right, it's always a uh, high pressure to, to really improve and um, um, expectations are rising. And uh, we're also in a, in a constant um, race and, and uh, between streetcar homologation and putting in as much racing technology as possible. And I think we did a big step on the car, a huge effort, maybe the highest effort we put ever in such a car. So I'm sure, yeah, we will fulfill. Yeah, let's see if you really can keep that promise later, but let's talk a little bit more about the technology because that is something we can't see at first glance. Um, what do you say? How much does it help to have all this motorsport expertise with the, the street cars, for example, like the GT3? For, for me, that's always um, two sides. It's one is for sure it's the technology. Everything we learned about high revving engines, about normally aspirated engines, about suspension, especially aerodynamics. I think we did a really big step on the aero side for the new GT3. But it's also spirit, um, <laughs> the spirit of engineering this car to, to make to make the baby happen, to make it live, <laughs> uh, to bring all in a GT3 needs. And that's. There's a small core team, they work close together day by day, they can trust each other and that makes a very, very essential part of the GT3. I think you already delivered a quote for the journalist to bring that baby to life. I love that one. <laughs> um, but since the people are thinking, maybe sometimes they're thinking right now, what is she talking about that with the number seven? What is that all about? <coughs> and for those who are still wondering, um, we're presenting you today the seventh generation of the GT3. So from the seventh generation back to the very first one in 1999, you see, I didn't exaggerate with the number thing at Porsche, 1999. Um, if I did my research right, they were sold out after just two months and Porsche had to produce more. So an icon since day one. What do you think, Frank? What is the reason? Why is the GT3 still an icon today? I think the GT3 developed over the years more and more to be the 911, the variant that it's the most exciting and for me very important. It carries everything of the DNA of a 911, but also of the Porsche brand in a single car. If you want to explain Porsche or the 911, what is very, very closely linked to it, I always say, go out for a drive, take the car an hour on the racetrack or go in the countryside. And you will come back and you understand everything about Porsche. It's all built in. It's the essence of Porsche in a single car. And that made the GT3 over the, over the years so special. And I think what we're gonna present now <laughs> is still the same. Yeah, and while this car already has made history, we write a new chapter of a whole new story today. And I think that's the perfect moment to meet the new one. And who could present it better than 
the father of the new GT3. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Andreas Andy Preuninger and the new Porsche 911 GT3. <laughs> I think that's also the way he parks in front of a supermarket, right? <laughs> so <laughs> here he is, Andy. I think driving slowly is not an option for you, right? Well, it hurts almost <laughs> driving that car slowly, sorry. <laughs> that was slowly for you, okay. I think that was a really good, let's say, sneak peek of what the GT3 is all about. We're gonna talk about that later. But first of all, I wanna know from a very personal perspective, what makes the GT3 special? Well, Sarah, it has been a tough and challenging race in the last three and a half years. And I'm happy to admit I'm quite keen on seeing the finishing line in a checkered flag ahead. This was the biggest, most complex and most demanding GT project so far. But what a machine. The results show it. It was well worth the effort. This is the most extreme, most exciting GT3 that we have ever developed. And for that reason, it's a very special car for me and my team. Yeah, and you said it already, this isn't just a car anymore. I think it's really a driving machine. Oh. But I have one question. Did you two race beforehand and a winner got to drive the car on the <laughs> stage or? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no so but yeah. it would be a good I idea I for the next time. <laughs> next time. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, Frank, you also drove it. Uh, so what was your first thought when you jumped into the car and drove it really the first time? Well, that's always a very special moment if you, get a, if you have a new variant, if you have a new GT3. Um, and the engineering guys, normally they say, no, it's too early, but uh, then you have to, to beg and ask them, can I drive? And this, this first impression of a car to get the feedback, if it's really a GT3, is it, is it, could we carry over all the DNA that we wanted that are necessary for a GT car also to a new platform? What is not so easy, looking at the boundaries of homologation and everything. And, uh, but I, I was, I had two thoughts when I, when I finished the drive. One was, well, it happened. Everything is there, what we need for such a car. Very relaxed on that side. On the other hand, I say, well, that's still a hell of work to do until it's <laughs> finished. <laughs> and he did a hell of work and he finished it, finished it in a very, I think, awesome way. So thanks for now, Frank. We'll see you later in the Q&A session. And for those with an already higher pulse during that short presentation of the car, I think we can make your heart beat even faster. Winding road and racetrack. That's where a GT3 really feels at home. So let's have a look at the new Porsche 911 GT3 in action. seconds only, but I enjoyed each and every second of it. Um, Andy, since we're talking here about high-performance sport cars, I mean, the people want to know what's under the hood? Well, under the hood depends what luggage you're carrying, because <laughs> we're yeah. referring to this yeah. part of the car as the Thank hood. As thanks the for that. You want to know <laughs> about the engine, right? What's beneath the rear wing? So, and I can tell you, it's a motorsport engine from the first degree. It's the same engine we use in the cup car. It's four liter displacement, flat six, high revving, a fire breathing, normally aspirated engine with all the tech from a race car engine like individual throttle bodies, uh, dry sump lubrication, titanium parts in the engine, a lightweight exhaust. This is for me the most emotional engine that's on the market anywhere today. It's so much fun. But it's not all that defines a GT3. It's a lot engine, but it's the rest also. And on that car, we have a complete new suspension, a double wishbone front axle for the first time. That's a revolutionary evolution, I would say. Um, bigger wheels, bigger brakes, wider rims, and um, 
that all on the 992 platform and it's a little bit bigger, a little bit more competent and um, it needed some lightweight trickery to keep the weight down and that is dispersed all over the car. So all boxes ticked. So did I miss the part where you said how much horsepower this car has? No, this I've car has 510 horsepower and um, that's <laughs> a lot for a 1435 kilo car and uh, that's exactly the sweet spot we're aiming at for having a driver's car and the perfect track tool for the weekend. And speaking of another very favorite topic of you, I mean, you're well known for putting your cars, let's say, on a dais. So <laughs> how much did you train off at this one? Well, uh, that brings us back to the hood. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> it's made of carbon fiber and uh, we save some kilos here and underneath hidden is a super lightweight battery mm -hmm. that brings the weight down even more. The rims are lighter than before. If you look at the glass throughout the car, there's super light, very thin glass. So we save about five kilos in comparison to the predecessor just on the glass. And if you're a freak for carbon fiber, you get a roof in carbon fiber as well. Uh, puts down the car's weight another kilo and the rear wing and the whole section on the rear is painted but underneath even where you can see the cross members carbon fiber as well additionally around the engine we found another five kilos and it goes on and on and on <laughs> the end result is this car is about the same weight as the predecessor but incorporating a lot more technology but you just talked about all the exterior components so what is about the interior did you also tweak something here we don't weight. stop at the interior. If you look closely, you'll find complete new ways of setting up the carpet in the car. It's complete new lightweight carpet. Uh, in comparison to the predecessor, it's about three or four kilos less. And uh, that's quite substantial. Uh, we changed the seats a little bit, a little bit more edgy, give <laughs> a little bit more support to the shoulders. And look at that microfiber cloth here. It's a dual layer with this blue shining through. It's perforated. It looks very sophisticated with the stitching. We like it a lot because it mirrors the exterior so well. So for the record, you started that topic. So let's dive into the girly talk because I love that application here. It's the same color as the outside color. And I learned that this color is called shark blue. So who's the inventor of, I have to mention it again, Shark Blue. Shark. <laughs> I mean, the inventor of names is always our marketing department and they were spot on with Shark Blue, I think, because Shark, what a beautiful, powerful and elegant creature. I think it fits very well to the character of the GT3. But um, the color itself, I have to confess, I could contribute. And there's a little anecdote connected to that because when I was on holiday, which is rarely, <laughs> <laughs> I was lying at the beach in August 27 in Sardinia and this be beautiful super yacht passed by, a 300 feet very elegant uh, super yacht and it had this gleaming blue hull. I was on my feet taking my camera that that's exactly the color we need and uh, the rest is history. Here it is. <laughs> so this is what you do on your holidays, on your rally holidays. Well, <laughs> And I think a lot of people out there, including myself, are very happy that this yacht wasn't orange or something like that. Um, but speaking of design, let's go to this, well, I say huge rear wing and to that massive diffuser down there. I think these aren't just design elements. This is a statement straight from the racetrack. This is an absolute statement, but it's a functional statement. On a GT car, like on every Porsche, form follows function, but we think the form should look beautiful as well while it's functioning. And um, this is the new way of, uh, of uh, supporting a, uh, a wing, a rear wing. If you turn around and look at the RSR race car, a swan neck spoiler, a swan neck wing, sorry. Um, and um, it shows perfectly the technology transfer um, that we uh, live uh, with the GT cars, with the GT car, the GT race cars and the G street cars. So technology transfers from the track to the road. And this is a perfect example. And what works on a race car and makes it fast, it's good for a street car as well, is it? So it also depends now on the driver, but motorsport feeling is given here. Although the GT cars are inseparably connected to you, we have to mention there's a whole team yeah. behind these cars. And of course, a lot of more energy. So energy, technology, energy as well, but technology. So let's have a look directly into the development of GT cars.
we worked especially on the efficiency. Pre-development saw well over 700 simulations before it was fine-tuned in over 160 hours in the wind tunnel. The new 911 GT3 achieves 50% more downforce than the predecessor in its delivery settings. The high downforce setting allowed us to generate 150% more downforce than on the predecessor model. For the first time, these cars are coming with an adjustable front diffuser. Its four different settings can regulate downforce at the front. This continues at the rear. Here we have a fully closed rear diffuser, which generates more than 60 kilograms in downforce at top speed. This time the rear wing is suspended from above. The wing's upper surface is the pressure side that is significantly less susceptible to disturbances. The wing's underside is its suction side and reacts delicately to disturbance patterns. Not only the components, but also the development methods are very much alike those of motorsport vehicles. In the wind tunnel, we don't only simulate straight line driving, but actually check every position the car will take on the track. We let the car yaw, pitch, and roll to simulate ambient conditions on the track, which we then improve accordingly. This is a really light car, but brimming with engineering technology. We tried to get weight out of the car wherever possible so as to convey the most agile, emotional, and precise drive behavior. Speaking of emotions, it's not only a matter of having a light car that feels precise and agile, but the engine plays a vital role too, being the heart of the vehicle. With the GT3, Legacy demands a high revving aspirated engine with 9,000 revs, 510 horsepower, and 470 nanometers of torque to turn it into a first grade fun machine. The difference between a cup engine and a road engine here comes down to just two key components, the exhaust system and the engine control unit. The individual throttle butterflies come straight out of racing. Fitted into the street legal car, they now provide a much better response behavior. Thus, the driver's commands are implemented instantly and more precise, which impressively underlines the very features of the naturally aspirated engine. The challenge of a high revving engine comes with the masses that need to be accelerated and decelerated time and again. The smaller dimensions of the mass itself, the easier it is to arrange and design it. This engine really needs no sound engineering. The car sounds superbly, especially from the inside. All mechanical sounds are clearly audible, arranged and composed into a beautiful melody. The cockpit is very sporty and clean, with every function extremely intuitively understood by the driver. We offer three different modes, normal, sport, and track. Specific to the GT3 is the so-called track view. It compacts all the information I need on the track or during a sporty outing to the immediate field of vision ahead of the driver. We see oil pressure and oil temperature, tire pressures, and of course, the large central rev counter. I truly love that track view. I mean, the best thing in my, in my uh, very personal opinion is the shift light. It's not necessary, but it's cool. It helps a lot. <laughs> helps a lot. And it's um, cool, yeah, right. Of course, it's always functional. If you put something in a car, it's functional. Um, and you once said about the GT3, and I quote, the emotions and the joy of driving, that's why we desire the car from the heart to the stomach. Yes, to the Correct. stomach. So poetic. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that's also the reason why you've tested the new one to the bone at Nordschleife with two very special and well-known experts. You're referring to our test driver dream team, Mr. 911, Jörg Bergmeister, who raced six generations of 911 race cars with huge success. Nobody knows the 911 better than he does. And Lars Kern, or should I name him Mr. Nordschleife, <laughs> where so many record labs under his belt, <laughs> There's nobody around that knows the Nordschleife better than him. And 
Can you imagine what happens when you give both these guys a key to that car and give them a day off at the Nordschleife? Here's the story. The Nordschleife is the real acid test, the benchmark in motorsports. It takes all from the car. You never stop learning up and down, blind sections, slow corners, fast turns. The Nordschleife has it all. It tells you about an absolute best-in-class performance. If you manage it well, you know the car is fit for anywhere. Next to the engineering, it is definitely the spirit you bring to this track. We have a team that is very much rooted in the GT concept, able to come up with ever new ideas out of years of hands-on experience. The car now comes with a double-link traverse axis, an absolute first for a street car. I would say this is an example for real one-to-one -one technology transfer from motorsports into serial production, which ultimately benefits the customer. Already, the 911 RSR demonstrated to us that this is a significant step for the performance. The same now happened to the GT3 streetcar. My personal feeling is that lap times are coming from technical departments. All in all, this is a giant step towards a race car. It hardly pitches when you brake, and the transition phases in the corners are very neutral. Significantly more downforce. In the Schwedenkreuz, the minimum speed was 220 kilometers per hour. Simply a perfect package. Twenty years ago, when the first GT3 hit the road, it was a dream car for me. The homogenous totality of engine transmission, limited slip differently, generates a tremendously exact driving behavior that after 15 minutes you had fused together with the car. Topping it all was the day when I was told we had to see what time we would be able to get out of the Nordschleife. Up until then, there was no serial production car that had made it in under eight minutes. Well, then I drove it in seven minutes and 56 seconds, which was a fabulous time we never thought possible. Under eight minutes was an absolute sensation back then. If anyone had told me that in 20 years this kind of car could do it in less than seven minutes, we would have replied that this is impossible. One minute is light years. Lap times are now faster than with a 918. This in turn tells you how fast the car is cornering. We got out and said, this is the best street car we have ever driven in our lives. The car is nearly 17 seconds faster than the predecessor, which is really breathtaking, especially if you drive it like this morning, with constancy and many laps after a another, with two drivers who are separated by just three-tenths of a second. Do this on the Nordschleife and not on any Grand Prix track. That's the drivability of the car. Squeezing out that one minute is a tribute to the engineers who really did an outstanding job. Naturally, I respect our young race drivers, but one day I'll get the chance to head out to the Nürburgring to see for myself how that works. <laughs> That was probably the most diplomatic challenge ever. We're looking forward <laughs> to it, dear Walter. And I'm very delighted that he's here right now, right from the racetrack in our studio, the Mr. 911 and Porsche ambassador, Jörg Bergmeister. Welcome, Jörg. Thank you. First Thank of all, I have to ask, do you accept the challenge of Walter? Anytime. <laughs> Anytime, yes, so the story goes on. Yeah, great to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Really happy that we are finally be capable of uh, showing this beauty to all the fans out there. Really exciting. Yeah, and as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we have got some journalists in our audience and now we want to answer some of their questions because there were so many questions and now we clustered it into the most uh, asked and highly frequently asked questions. So let's dive directly into it. And the first one goes to uh, Andy. Do you offer also club sport package at the same time with basic version and what does it contain? As a matter of fact, um, this is a car used on track days a lot and um, that's what the club sport package is made for. And historically from the first GT3 um, we offered this club sport package and so 
will we'll do that again. And uh, it consists of a roll cage, a rear part of a roll cage, and some six-point belt harnesses, everything you know from the historical um, cars as well. So everything's included in the package. And the good um, news about that is it's a non-cost option. <laughs> that was the best part. So that was storytelling. <laughs> yeah, good one. Um, next question goes to Frank. Uh, what is the difference between the PDK of the new 911 GT3 and the Carrera models? Well, uh, for the GT3, we decided to keep the seven speed um, uh, with the direct uh, ratios and had to adjust it a little bit to the, to the wheel diameter, but uh, we saved uh, weight and uh, thought that fits better to the characteristics of the GT3. Next one goes to Jörg. Um, <laughs> I love that question. <laughs> How much fun is it developing and test driving street cars like a GT3 compared to your racing career? Don't say anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, as a race car driver, um, when you get in a street car, you have to lower your expectations. But on that car especially, uh, I was shocked how good it is. It's uh, really a the grip level, the way it drives, the <coughs> how the balance is, it's so close to a race car, it's really, really impressive. So I r enjoy it and I think in the future it's only going to get better. And I think, <laughs> that, that I think that's the next challenge here. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I think one component is, of course, the rear wing. So let's talk about that. Um, the rear wing of the new GT3 looks impressive. Could there be an, <laughs> an even bit? It's really a question. Could there be an even bigger wing on a 911 any time in the future, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, yes, if you look at the RSR here behind us, it's got a bigger <laughs> wing, so there's room for improvement, I would say. Um, I wouldn't rule that out, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, next one, uh, Frank. Co first of all, congrats on a great presentation. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> will you be able to offer customers paint to sample colors from the start, or will this be added later? <laughs> <laughs> that was something I yeah. expected. Um, well, w uh, let me say, we learned our lessons. We are preparing a paint to sample. Um, it will be immediately or very quick uh, introduced uh, in higher capacities than ever, if everything works out. Um, so we're working on that. Uh, it will come by mid of the year. If everything works, keep the fingers crossed, but it looks very, very good. And if someone is looking for a very special and individual color, I think Jörg has got the best color inside <laughs> here. Maybe you can show it. Yes, <laughs> that would be exhausting on a GT3. <laughs> so let's move on. <laughs> um, but uh, Jörg, uh, on which sections of the Nordschleife did the new 911 GT3 improve most compared to the previous model? That's a good question. I never drove the old car on the Nordschleife, to be <laughs> honest. Uh, <laughs> but where it impressed me the most was the high-speed sections. Um, I think the, if you compare it to the previous GT3 RS, we are evenly matched now. Um, and considering it being a GT3, I think that makes it even more impressive. So uh, the high-speed was definitely <laughs> Very, very impressive. And speaking of sound, we already heard in that video that sound engineering wasn't necessary. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we have to talk about that. Um, how did you manage to maintain the typical GT3 sound with OPF in the exhaust, Andy? Well, um, we didn't have to do so much things, to be perfectly frank. Um, this engine has an inherent good sound, and you can't spoil it with uh, whatever exhaust you're putting under the car. And uh, you have to consider that on the predecessor, we had uh, two outer dampers and a damper in the middle. Now we are only having the center damper and uh, uh, the particulate filters and the catalyst, they function kind of as a damper as well, and so we don't lose any noise. And um, even the back pressure um, is not so much bigger than it was before on the, la on the outgoing model. Now I've got a very interesting question. I'm really looking forward to your answer because this is, I think, the question of the questions. How does a car like the GT3 fit into the electrification plans of Porsche, Frank? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's interesting. It fits, from my perspective, very good because it's still the DNA of Porsche and we want to keep the DNA. And um, second is we, we um, published that we are um, doing our research and we have partners um, to look in the subject of um, um, synthetic fuels. What we see is definitely something what could help to reduce the CO2 um, emissions worldwide, especially for the existing 
um, fleet. We want to test this in motorsport, and it also fits to GT3. We have no downside by using this kind of fuel. So um, that shows clearly that we trust in this technology. That was a very diplomatic and good answer. <laughs> and um, we move on with another very, very driving question in the audience. Uh, and that goes to Ani. Will the new GT3 be available with touring package again? <laughs> if yes, when? <laughs> well, we love the spoiler, but we love the touring package as well. And um, later that year, we have an idea if there's a touring package, yes. And um, I think we can confess here a touring package will come out later that year. And um, it has been very successful. And um, we have found this new niche very interesting for us and for the customers. So clear yes to that answer. And the people out there are sitting there like, who? <laughs> so <laughs> good job. <laughs> Last question goes to Frank. Um, the naturally as aspirated engine was applied here, keeping in line with the 911 GT3 ethos. But was a turbo engine ever considered for this new model? Um, well, in, when we started with the, with the concept of these cars, we, we always said we have to keep the normally aspirated engine as long as we ever could do, whatever it takes, whatever effort. So the second part was done, whatever it takes. So <laughs> the effort was really huge and was a really difficult development, but we finally managed it. Um, for sure, we talked turbo. Um, but there's always a tricky discussion because <laughs> we all love this normally, we love the turbos, but we also love the normally aspirated engines. So we'll see on the regulation and the emission side worldwide because we are doing a, a world engine that fits um, from, let me say, South Korea to the US, from Saudi Arabia to Europe. It fulfills all re emission regulations worldwide. That's very, very tricky. So we do our best to keep it life as long as we could. <laughs> so I think we could talk here for hours, but unfortunately we're at the end of our live stream. So I want to say math massive thanks to all of you. Thanks for your insight, answers, and of course, thanks for this amazing new high performance sport car. And of course, thanks to you out there watching our live stream. We're looking forward to welcoming you again at our next world premiere. Until then, keep driving safely, stay healthy and See you next time.